You call 911 because you or a loved one is having an emergency, hoping that the paramedics show up. Instead of an ambulance, you get a giant fire truck full of firefighters. Why did they send a fire truck instead of the ambulance? You need paramedics, right? Not firefighters. This and more on this episode of The Dr. Medic. To answer this question, we have to first understand what happens when you call 911. Click up here to see my video on what happens when you call 911. In the United States, there are thousands of different EMS systems in different ways that EMS and paramedics and ambulances and fire trucks respond to your 911 call. There is no way that a single video could describe how all of these different systems work but I will do my best to give a general description of how American EMS systems might work and why certain resources are sent to your location when you call 911. In the United States, fire department coverage is considered an essential service by the government and therefore has been around a lot longer than ambulances and receive far more funding and public support. In general, most of the big fire departments across the country are funded by city or county budgets. This allows them to prepare for bigger emergencies and staff their departments far above and beyond what might normally be needed on a daily basis to protect their communities. These fire departments will typically have many stations strategically placed throughout their city or county to provide coverage to their citizens. Like I said, Oftentimes, this fire coverage is far above and beyond what is needed on a daily basis. This staffing is mostly required to provide enough coverage for when major incidents take place, such as multi-alarm structure fires, terrorist incidents, uh, major weather-related incidents, and even large grass fires and major vehicle accidents. Ambulances, however, at least here in the United States, are not considered an essential service and do not typically have the same amount of coverage. Let's see what John Oliver think. Which brings us to an absolutely incredible fact. Unlike other first responders, such as police and fire departments, right now, in all 39 of these states, EMS is not considered an essential service. Not an essential service, see what I mean? One could argue all day long about whether ambulances should be a part of our public safety system or a part of the American healthcare system, but that is definitely going to have to be a topic for a future video. For now, ambulances are mostly a part of the public safety system, including 911. Depending on which city you live in, the ambulances in your area may be staffed and funded through the fire department, such as in Houston, Texas or they could be staffed completely through a local hospital-based system such as New York's Presbyterian Hospital in Manhattan. They could be staffed and funded completely through a private company such as American Medical Response or AMR, which is in many cities across the country. They could be completely staffed and funded through their own city or county budgets, which we call a third service ambulance, such as in Austin Travis County EMS in Texas. They could be 100% volunteer, as they are in Wilton, Wisconsin, or they could have some form of combination of these, as is the case with what we call a public utility model, which is what they use in Oklahoma City, Fort Worth, Texas, and St. Petersburg, Florida. As you can see, there are many different models, and I can't wait to talk about which one is going to be the perfect model in some other future video. But right now, nonetheless, the funding model for most of these ambulance services comes from what we call reimbursement. Reimbursement is how ambulance agencies collect money for their services, either from private insurance billing or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, otherwise known as CMS, or by directly billing the patient. Some may argue that this is a flawed business model as their funding is contingent upon receiving 911 calls and then billing for their services. This is different from the fire department who, in general, receives their funding for their department through tax revenue and is typically not dependent upon call volume. In short, most big fire departments would receive the same amount of funding in any given year 
regardless of how many medical calls they responded to, while most ambulance agencies would only receive the amount of money that they can collect from insurance companies, Medicare, and the actual patients that they transport. As an example, 100% of the calls that ambulances respond to will be EMS related. But according to the data from the National Fire Incident Reporting System, only 4% of the reported fire department calls are fire related, with nearly 65% of their calls being EMS related. Now, that is the very general description of the differences in funding and models for EMS and fire coverage. But let's hold that part right there and we're gonna come back to that in a bit. Now, what about patient care? Again, in general, most ambulances will be staffed with an EMT and a paramedic. Click above here to see some differences between EMTs and paramedics in another video. But in short, EMTs provide basic life support while paramedics provide advanced life support. Both are very important and both are very integral to the EMS systems in the United States. Many fire engines are staffed with anywhere from two to four firefighters, and for most departments, all of them will most likely be EMTs at a minimum. However, there are also many fire engines that will have at least one paramedic and maybe even more. These professionals are trained and educated as both firefighters and EMTs or as firefighters and paramedics. Many of the fire engines that have paramedics on them will have much of the same equipment that will be on the paramedic ambulances such as IV equipment, uh, airway equipment, advanced cardiac monitors and defibrillators, and lots of advanced medications. You could say that they have lots of the same equipment as the ambulance, they just typically cannot transport the patient. Recall that most fire departments and therefore fire engines are staffed in order to be prepared for the worst of all days. They have many stations around your community and when they are not on an emergency call, they are most likely at the station doing other duties such as training, working out, and staying prepared for the next emergency. The ambulances though are more often out and about in the city as they are transporting patients to the hospital and may also even be transferring a patient from one hospital to another, and sometimes they might even be transporting a patient home from the hospital. What does this mean? It means that as a general philosophy, a fire engine can probably get to your location quicker than most ambulances. In some instances, this can be the difference between life and death, but in most instances though, it's not. We're gonna come back to that though in just a second. Remember I mentioned that EMTs provide basic life support and paramedics provide advanced life support? Well, there is also a system in place with dispatch centers called Emergency Medical Dispatch or EMD. Without going too far down that rabbit hole, EMD is a process set up for 911 dispatchers to efficiently dispatch the appropriate resources to each emergency call while also providing important pre-arrival medical instructions to the 911 caller, such as some emergency medication instructions, uh, bleeding control, and even CPR instructions. They do this by asking predetermined questions that guide the dispatcher through an algorithm. When the EMD dispatcher is done asking their questions and has made it all the way through the algorithm, there is a code that will appear that tells the dispatcher if the 911 call requires an ambulance, a fire truck, a police officer, the power or the gas company, animal control, or any combination thereof. For instance, if you call 911 because you stubbed your toe and you are not in any danger and you just want an ambulance, the EMD code will most likely advise to only send an ambulance without a fire truck and possibly to send that ambulance without any lights and sirens. Or if you are having a heart attack or serious breathing problems, a code will appear to send an ambulance with lights and sirens, but this time also with a fire truck. One, that fire truck will probably get there quicker than the ambulance since they are stationed closer to your home. That quicker response could possibly benefit the patient by allowing basic or advanced life support to provide early emergency treatments such as airway management, bleeding control, 
quality CPR or even early defibrillation with an automated external defibrillator or an advanced cardiac monitor. These firefighter EMTs or firefighter paramedics can make a pretty big impact and help the patient during this time and get the patient ready for rapid transport once the ambulance gets there. And two, some of these high acuity calls also simply require a lot more manpower than can be provided by a single ambulance crew. When a medical or a trauma emergency happens, there are many people in the emergency room, such as nurses and techs and respiratory therapists and physicians, who are there to help and manage the patient. But when the emergency is at your house or in the middle of the highway, there may only be two people on that ambulance to manage all those roles that would normally be there in the ER. In cases such as this, having three or four extra firefighters there to help with managing the scene, moving the patient, and assisting with patient care can be very beneficial. This type of system, where only the most appropriate resources are sent to these 911 calls, is called a tiered response system. This type of system is used in many areas around the country, such as in Hillsborough County, Florida, uh, or in Seattle, Washington. However, most cities do not use a tiered response system. Even though many of them do use emergency medical dispatchers, especially for the fact of pre-arrival instructions for the patient, many of these cities opt to send both an ambulance and a fire engine to all emergency calls, regardless of what the 911 caller says or what the EMD code says. Yes, in this case, if you stub your toe and then call 911, you will get an ambulance with a paramedic and an EMT, as well as a fire engine or even a ladder truck with up to four or five firefighter EMTs or paramedics for your stubbed toe. Many fire or city officials state that their reasoning for this is that the fire department can always get there quicker and it just makes sense to send them on every call just in case they are needed. Well, I'm not sure that the science supports that. In fact, I am sure that the science does not support that. As with most things in the world, just because something might seem to make sense, that does not mean that it actually is true or that it's scientifically accurate. Resources such as firefighters and fire engines are precious, and they are expensive, and they are valuable, and they are not unlimited. With resources this valuable, while a bit more complicated, the right thing to do is probably to send the resources that are needed for each call, instead of sending all of the resources to every call. Yes, in certain situations such as major vehicle accidents and heart attacks, response times to the patient and overall time outside of the hospital have been shown to improve outcomes for the patient. In a 2017 paper by O'Keefe, he sought to evaluate the role of ambulance response times in improving survival for out-of-hospital cardiac arrests. O'Keefe did find that rapid response times to patients in immediate risk of cardiac arrest may very well be beneficial. However, he also went on to conclude that concentrating resources on reducing response times across the board to improve survival for those patients already in arrest is unlikely to be a cost-effective option. And as a whole, there is no empirical evidence to support that quicker response times on all calls matter at all, nor do they have any effect on patient outcomes or patient survival. The science supports sending fire engines to those high acuity emergency calls, which we call priority one calls, but the science does not support sending them to all 911 calls. Some have questioned this policy and stated that it wastes money and resources, and more importantly, could put folks in danger of being forced to wait longer than they normally would. For instance, let's say you live in the great state of Texas and you live just outside of Dallas. Now, by no means is this necessarily how Dallas's system is set up. I'm just using this as an example for the purposes of this video. So if you live just on the east side of Dallas, Texas, and you call 911 because you stubbed your toe, you may have a valid complaint. Your toe really could be broken and maybe you need to go to the hospital or maybe you cannot drive and maybe you do need an ambulance. But when you call 911, you do not have a choice as to what level of response you are going to get. 
The emergency medical dispatcher asks you the questions through their algorithm, but it may not matter what the code is that pops up at the end if this is the type of system that sends a fire truck and an ambulance to every call. The dispatcher immediately dispatches an ambulance and an advanced life support paramedic fire engine. The ambulance is returning from a hospital and may not get to you for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. The closest available fire engine is right around the corner with Dallas Fire Station number 32. This fire engine literally only takes 30 to 60 seconds to get to your house. They will begin taking care of you and doing a great job of assessing and treating you on scene. Now, we all know that a stubbed toe is by no means a life-threatening emergency whatsoever. If you waited three or five days, it probably would not affect your overall health at all, but nonetheless, the firefighter paramedics are going to do a great job of assessing and treating you. But while you're there receiving treatment from the fire department, your buddy over here who lives two or three blocks down the street, calls 911 himself because he's having a full-blown heart attack. And he needs a paramedic to get there as soon as possible to treat him by either giving him life-saving medications, uh, performing a rapid EKG, or performing CPR and defibrillation. But that can't take place because the next closest fire engine is all the way on the other side of town at station number 44. The fire engine from Station 44 now has to drive all the way over into Station 32's district to provide this life-saving care. You see what I mean? I do have to recognize that all publicly funded departments have to have good public relations and show that public and their communities that their tax dollars are hard at work. I get this, I do, but the science does not show this to be beneficial to the patient costs more money and potentially puts higher emergencies at risk when valuable resources may be wasted on lower acuity calls. This is not to say that this should affect the funding of these fire departments. Many folks, such as myself, would support much more funding and more staffing and more resources, more equipment and more training for firefighters because we know that when, you know, you know what hits the fan, I want well-trained and well-equipped firefighters to show up and save the day. But personally, I don't need to see the truck on the street to know that my tax dollars are being put to good use, just like I don't need to see an aircraft carrier in my backyard to know that the military is well-trained and well-equipped to protect America. The most expensive part of just about any emergency service, whether it's the military or the fire department, is readiness. And readiness is the cost to be ready for the worst of all emergencies. Me personally, I would support paying more tax dollars for more fire department coverage, even if they ran less calls than they do now. But I also understand that many taxpayers want to see their fire department engines out there on the streets, staying busy all the time. So why does a fire truck show up when you call 911? Many times they show up because they are staffed with highly trained and educated firefighters and paramedics to provide life-saving emergency care to their patients until a transport ambulance shows up. Other times they show up to provide added resources to the ambulance crew and yet other times they might show up simply because the system says that a fire truck should be there too. Either way, every one of these men and women, whether on an ambulance or fire truck, are there to save you and make a positive impact on your life. They have dedicated their lives to making our lives a bit better and maybe even to save our life if we are in danger. They do amazing work and they do it for far less money than they deserve, but they don't do it for the money anyway. They do it because they care. Again, yes, I know that many systems may be a bit different than what I just described, but as a whole, this is a general description of the 911 EMS response system in the US. Some systems work better than others and some are a bit wasteful. How does your system work? What works best in your community? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments below or send me an email. If you liked this video or benefited in any way from its content, please throw me a like and a subscription so I can keep making videos in the future.
In the end, I've got nothing but love and respect for all of the men and women in the fire and EMS communities. I wish you all nothing but love, and I do hope that you have a beautiful day. Thank you.